Listen, if we haven't had the privilege of meeting just yet, my name is Daniel Groves, and I have the privilege of serving as the teaching pastor here at Hope City. And uh, I'm grateful to hang out uh, with y'all. I've been been able to, I've had the privilege of uh, being able to be a part of Summer Hope City this whole month. And uh, I, I'm, I'm so grateful, and I wanna give some honor where honor's due, because if honor's in you, it comes out of you. You can't fake honor. Uh, I, I'm grateful for pastors that recognize that this whole thing uh, that, that was birthed six years ago uh, is not a spring. It's not something that's a one and done. We don't just have these big weekend experiences. Now, this is a marathon, and our pastors need longevity, and so they realize, hey, we need to take a breather so we can have a fresh wind behind our sails to finish the year strong. So can we honor our pastors, Pastors Jeremy and Jennifer? Come on, you can honor them better than that. They said yes. They pray for you. They're standing with you. I talked to Pastor Jeremy last night, and he He's getting refreshed, and I'm just really excited about the future and what God is doing and what he has done. Do y'all realize that there's a reason why? I've said this before, that our windshield is bigger than our rearview mirror because God is far more interested in our future than our past. Like, everything God has done up until this point has been amazing, but I believe what's next is God's best. How many of y'all believe that? Like, I believe there's more miracles. Come on, there's more signs and wonders. There's, we've already seen over 40,000 people commit their lives to Jesus. Can, you, can, can y'all, with, through the filter of faith, get ready when we say 250,000 have given their lives to Jesus? Come on. Because the silos are next. There's so much that God is doing here. So you've got me this weekend again, and I'm fired up because we're in week number four of Summer at Hope City. Week one, we talked about unshakable faith, how in the waiting season, in the season where maybe God seems quiet, how there's unshakable faith that's developed. I encourage you to go back and re-listen, re-watch that sermon. Week two, we talked about unstoppable favor. I gave our church a 90-day favor challenge. How many of y'all have been looking for favor? Come on. How many of y'all have been like all the little intricacies of your life? You're like, well, I see favor there. God showed up for me here. Come on. I'm getting DMs all the time. This lady's like, I'm finding parking spots like crazy. People are literally just backing out and saying, this is your spot. I'm putting my own laminated sign up, which you can go to jail for that. Don't do that. But so week number three, last weekend, Father's Day, we talked about the unfailing love of our father. And this week, We're going to talk about unlimited power. We're going to talk about how we have unlimited power and access to this incredible relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's a person. It's not a vibe. It's not a feeling or an emotion. And it doesn't have to be weird. You start talking about Holy Spirit, depending on where you're uh, denominationally or your theological background, you're like, oh, this is going to get strange. Don't make eye contact with this beard. Like, it doesn't have to be weird. I'm not going to jump and float on a cloud. Like, somebody's not going to whip banners and flags all around the room and you have to duck. Like, I can hardly, whichever way or however you have been raised, and when you hear the word or you hear the phrase, the Holy Spirit, it doesn't have to be spooky. It doesn't have to be weird. This is something that God has given us because we at Hope City, we're a spirit-filled church. We, we are contending for signs, wonders, and miracles. We believe in the Trinity, that God is, is, is three, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus, and we're gonna unpack this in the verses, gave us access, and the Holy Spirit, who's our comforter, our advocate, our intercessor, we're gonna talk about this incredible, unlimited power. Because here's the truth. You can get to heaven, and you can go to heaven by just giving your life to Jesus, but you can experience heaven on earth through the access that we have through the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody should say amen. Before we jump in, I want to say a couple other things because I know we've got a lot of new people here and at some of our other locations. Uh, Our church, Hope City, is built on the foundation of relationship. This is not about religion. Religion kills relationship. This is not about religion. It's not about rituals and do's and don'ts. It's about relationship with a God who not only loves you but really likes you. And Christianity isn't about bad people becoming good. It's about dead people coming alive. It's not about behavior modification. It's about a true heart transformation. And we believe scripturally that when you get your roots down deep in the local church, Psalms 92, 13 says, blessed is the man or woman who's planted in the house of the Lord. See, when you get your roots down deep, when you allow God to begin to stir up and remove some things in your life that maybe you've allowed access to, you can grow in him. And I truly believe that as we move forward as a church and we jump more deeper into connect groups and we do more Hope City missions outreaches, come on, give a hand for our Hope City outreach, man. Our missions team is crushing it. The truth is we believe that deep roots produce healthy fruit. And when we connect to the local church, which we believe is the heartbeat of heaven, this isn't about growing a big church and having every seat filled. It's about you growing as a son and a daughter. 
and recognizing with audacious faith that there's healing in your hands and that when you get in the way of someone's storm, their life can change because of who you are and whose you are. John 15, five says it this way. I'm the vine. That's the Lord. You're the branches. That's us. When you remain in me and I in you, you will bear a little bit of fruit. It, it doesn't say that. If, if your Bible says that, we're going to swap it out. It's the book of Mormon. We're going to get you. Can I say that? Am I allowed to say that? No, it says that when you stay connected to the vine, when you stay connected to his heart, and we believe part of that connection is through the local church. Part of that connection is through our connect groups. Part of that connection is you going to growth track and, and, and allowing God to unlock your purpose and your assignment and make a difference. When you connect, it says, apart from me, you can do nothing. See, in our humanity, a lot of times we say, God, we trust you with all this, but we're just going to hold on to this. And God's saying, listen, I want all of you and I want you to hang out in my presence and I want to grow you into who you're called to be. That's why we want you to know God. We want you to find freedom. We want you to discover your purpose and ultimately make a difference. And I believe that there are people here today that you've been sitting on the sidelines and summer's a good time to get refreshed. It's a good time to kind of hit the reset button. It's a good time to kind of let your hair down and kind of reevaluate things going into the second half of the year. But if you're on the sidelines wondering if there's room for you and your gifting and the purpose of God and the call of God on your life, the resounding answer is yes. You just have to get your yes out of the way. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to yell yes. Come on, one, two, three. Yes. That's pretty good. So you guys have all signed up. We'll expect you to volunteer next week. Okay, that's ridiculous. So we're a spirit-filled church. We are believing. This is, this is the truth. Uh, I've been praying this for the past six months. I told Pastor Jeremy, I said, I'm audacious enough to believe that there are going to be people that start pulling RVs on our parking lot that are, that are stopping here after they left the Cancer Treatment Centers of America because they heard rumors that when you show up to Hope City, tumors disappear. We're believing that people will walk in and diagnoses will reverse, that marriages that were falling apart will begin to fall into place, that people that have struggles and addictions that say, I can't seem to fill the void, will walk out completely set free, healed, and delivered. We're a spirit-filled church. So like, if worship is good and it's just gifting, then it's just karaoke. But when it's gifting and it's anointed, whoo, that's when fruit happens. And that's when miracles begin to break out. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm believing for miracles. Come on. We're a spirit-filled church and we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And today I want to, I want to look at a little parallel. I want to kind of do a comparison of something that we have access to in the natural. I have an iPad up here and an iPhone and we have access to something and a feature that's on this. And it's in, it's this simple phrase, Hey Siri. Now, I know instantly there are some of you in the room that are still, you still, you haven't seen the glorious light and you use, you use an Android and I, listen, I'm going to be, I'm going to be super transparent. I don't know who you call. I, when we say, Hey Siri, you're like, Hey Randall. I don't know. Like, Hey Randall, what's the, what? I don't know. And I'm so sorry. I literally have, I should have done some research, but I just don't care. I, I just, I'll be honest. Like. And if I'm bothering you, if you're like, where's the real pastor? You can email me. You're like, I'm frustrated at this guy with the beard. You can email me at Randall at HopeCity.com. <laughs> is that wrong? I feel like I'm, okay. But what if we had access? This is the question. What if we had access to the Holy Spirit like we have instant access to Siri? Yeah. So the other day I was driving in my car and, and uh, this song popped up and then it hadn't, it hadn't changed yet. So I couldn't see who it was. And I was like, hey, Siri. And she popped up like, and I, I have the one with the British accent. She's like, here's Daniel. I'm like, That's like... <laughs> and so I asked her what song was. She told me and boom, I was able to download it. I mean, like instantly, like this instant access. So this morning I, I, I got up really, or I get up super early on Sunday mornings. And so I said, hey, Siri, she popped up. She said, yeah. I said, can you set my alarm for? And I told her what time. And, and so, and then I said, and can you set another alarm? Hey, Siri, can you call Jeremiah Woods and, and give a shout out to Hope City Worship in the new Fighting For Me single? Cause it's fire. Like, can you call? And if you have not downloaded it yet, you may want to pull out your phones and download Fighting For Me. That's a little uh, like an infomercial. Like if you download it now, you get Ginsu set of knives. Okay. <laughs> but I have this access that I can literally say, hey, Siri, what's the weather going to be in Houston in July? And she's like 185 degrees and a thousand percent humidity. I'm like, I don't know if that's facts. Or I can say, hey, whatever city I'm in, I can say, hey, what's some great local restaurants near me? And boom, she has the goods to back it up. What if we had that same type of access to the Holy Spirit? Hey, Holy Spirit, 
I need clarity in this relationship. Hey, Holy Spirit, I need advice or wisdom in this financial situation. Hey, Holy Spirit, I need peace in the middle of this health struggle. Hey, Holy Spirit, I need peace in the middle of this broken place in my life because the truth is the more you grow and the more you realize it's not a vibe, but he's a person, the more you'll walk, talk, and recognize the access that you have to this unlimited power through the relationship that we have every day with the Holy Spirit. Every morning, I woke up again today. This is true. I woke up, I walked in the bathroom, and I said, God, thank you. Thank you that I woke up again today. God, it's not with my enticing words or perfect oratory delivery. That's what Paul said. It's the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. So whether I'm at church, whether I'm at a restaurant, whether I'm getting gas, I want to be more mindful of your agenda. God, if there's anything in my life that's distracting me so much that I can't hear your still small voice, that I can't feel the nudge, that if I'm walking in somebody's path and I'm supposed to get in the way of their storm, God, forgive me for ever missing moments because I didn't realize the access that I have to your spirit. So today we're going to unpack this a little bit more, and I want to point us to some scriptures about who the Holy Spirit is and the significance of our relationship. John 14, verse 16, it's the Amplified. Jesus said this, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, a comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, a standby to be with you forever. See, the Holy Spirit helps. He comforts. He's our advocate, our intercessor. He strengthens us. He stands with us, and he lives in us, and when, when we recognize this type of relationship, we'll recognize the fullness of God that we can live in our God-given potential. Our relationship with the Holy Spirit is a life-giving and purpose-sustaining relationship. And every inspired, God-given dream is dependent upon the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives to see it come to fruition. Because on our own, here's the truth, and I want to burst anybody's bubble, we're just not that good. Like on our own, we'll just survive, cruise control, sort of life, just kind of getting through it. And I know that's messes with ambitious, super driven, ego centered people. But the truth is, if you really want to make a difference, you have to have the Holy Spirit in you, dwelling in you and activated through you. I was talking to my friend Josh the other day, who's on our team. And we were talking about like, if someone gave you a new car, some of you are like, is that going to happen? Is that happening today? <laughs> like maybe during Christmas. So calm down. I have a partially used Chipotle gift card though. I'll give that to somebody. But we were talking about if somebody gave you a new car, like what an amazing, right? It'd be amazing if somebody said, hey, I want to bless you with a brand new car. You'd be like, yes, Lord. And you start it up and you're like, this is amazing. And it gets you literally to your destination from A to B every day. You're like, this is incredible. And what if somebody stopped over and said, hey, man, what's the extra accessories and add-ons? You're like, I don't know. I start it and I drive it. What if you never accessed all the extras? What if you drove all summer long and it got you from A to B, but you just weren't very cool because you never accessed the air conditioning? Or we got that real like off the cuff, random deep freeze that everybody melted. We were like, this is terrible because our houses here are made out of paper mache and decoupage. Like everything just fell apart. We're like, what do we do with our hands? Like it's so cold. Like what if you drove around and it was freezing out and you never accessed the heater? Or you're struggling, you're like, hey, I gotta get off my, I can't talk in my AirPods right now, I can't see because it's raining so hard, but you never access the windshield wipers. What if you had a long drive and you never enjoyed the journey because you never accessed the music? The truth is there is accessories and add-ons that we never really have the fullness or the, uh, maybe the, the mindset to access when you don't know that it belongs to you. Yeah. So let's paint this parallel for a minute, the parallel with the relationship with Jesus. Many of us recognize the sacrifice, the vehicle to salvation, the existence that we'll have. Like, well, brother, I'll dance on the streets of gold. I get it, and it's gonna be amazing. And the truth is Jesus gives us, that sacrifice gives us that eternal access that we will have but there's still so much more that God wants to do. The Holy Spirit equips us with other add-ons and bonuses and, and accessories for every single season. And we, when we learn to, to lean into his presence and we grow daily in, in the presence of God, he's saying, hey, I want to equip you with more. I want to give you even more power. I want to give you even more insight and wisdom and clarity. I want to give you even more direction. So the reality is Jesus guarantees the Arrival, but the Holy Spirit guarantees the add-ons. 
I want to experience heaven on earth. I'm not satisfied with just surviving or getting through a day. I, like, I, I don't want to miss a moment where we could have seen a miracle break out in a family. I told this church, I was just out in North Carolina. I said, hey, do y'all have a room? I felt like, I, I really felt this from the Lord. I said, do y'all have like a little side room? And some of y'all are going to think this is super hyper spiritual, but I want you to hear this because this is what we believe because it's in the Bible. Everywhere Jesus went, whether it was Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, with the woman with the issue of blood, when he just got in the way of her storm and she fought through the crowd, or blind Bartimaeus, or all the amazing miracles he did, anytime Jesus got in the way of someone's storm, their story changed. So I'm in North Carolina, and I asked the pastors, I said, hey, do you all have a room to the side? Because I really felt like from the Holy Spirit that y'all are going to have to have a separate storage closet for all the walkers and wheelchairs that people are going to end up leaving here. And they were like, What? And I said, I really believe that there are going to be so many miracles of people that, that, that are going to get healed, that need walkers and wheelchairs, that you're going to need a separate room because you're not going to know what to do with them because they're not going to need them anymore once they come in this, this place of worship. And they were like, man, we're going to believe that. And some of y'all are looking at me like, okay. We ended up doing this worship night. We're singing, Jaira, you are enough. I will be content every single day. You are Jaira. And you are enough. And then we went into that forever enough. Always enough. You're more than enough. And we're just declaring it over and over. And this sweet lady, probably, I don't know, she was anywhere between 70 and 150. I don't know. She was older. <laughs> I don't know. She made her way down to the front. And she lifted her hands and began to worship. Wow. And the pastor elbowed me and said, look, she had a walker. And he said, be crazy if she'd leave it at the front. I said, it's only crazy until it happens. And she started just worshiping and started worshiping and she started getting free like she was 23. I mean, she started singing and shouting and praising. God honest truth, she looked at that walker and was like, I don't need that anymore. And she just, and she left it and she left the building and her daughter's like, I haven't seen my mom walk without a walker in years and they still have the walker and they put it in a closet, the closet that they're making room for more walkers and more wheelchairs. See, when you believe for miracles and you believe that the Holy Spirit will show up and move and do what he, listen, God will show up, flex and throw his weight around the room. The truth is we get in the way. Because what if somebody was said, she's getting in my way up here with her walk. I can't even sing. She's blocking my view. No, it says she got totally set free and left the thing that had been holding her back. And they told me, this has been weeks. I talked to the pastors yesterday. They said she walks up in here on Sundays full of energy, full of joy. Said that she got her miracle and walked out set free. I think somebody should shout. I, that's what we're believing for. I believe, though, the closer you get to the presence of God, the more you realize in this access that we have through the presence of God, it comes through, Pastor Jeremy says this, and we believe this, that everything is spiritual all the time, but the foundation, the beginning of all of this, the answer always begins with and always ends with Jesus. That's why we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons, but Romans 10, verse nine and 10, and I'll give you an opportunity at the end of this service to give your life to Jesus, but it says this, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, it says this, you will be saved. And so the moment you're saved, the transformation begins to happen. The moment that transformation begins to happen and that conversion begins to happen and that begins to heal your heart, there's also access that we get granted through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. It says, he set his seal, I love this, of ownership on us. How many of that just should make you feel good? He sets his seal of ownership. It's like a thumbprint that says, she's mine, like, like he belongs to me. And he put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. John chapter three, verse five, talks about being born again and references water and spirit. This is why we believe your next step after you give your life to Jesus is water baptism and that public expression of, and declaration of your relationship with Jesus that says, hey, I am one of his. I'm a king's kid now. That public declaration is your next step after you give your life to Jesus. And I want to encourage you next weekend, say next weekend, is Baptism Sunday. So if you have not been water baptiz baptized next week, baptized, come on, Nacho Libre, uh, to be, I'm concerned about your salvation and stuff, baptized. If you haven't seen the movie, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but it's amazing. But next weekend is, is, is Baptism Sunday, and I want to encourage you to, to take that next step. And we take all the guesswork out of it for you. 
uh, but show up and, sh- and get ready and look at the person next to you and say, if you, if you go, I'll go. Or if you haven't been baptized, I'll go celebrate with you. Come on, next weekend. Look at the person next to you and say, next weekend. Come on, let them know. But Jesus said in John 14, 26, again, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. So the parallel between the access we have to Siri and the access we have to the Holy Spirit. I have access to Siri like that. Come on, one, two, three, snap. One, two, three. We have access like that to the things of God. We have access to the good things that God wants to unlock in you. Wisdom, clarity, direction, peace, perseverance, fight, everything you need when you need it. But here's the truth. In my settings on my phone, if I don't want Siri to have access or I don't want to talk to Siri, I can turn it off. I can just go on and turn it off. My wife turned it off. She's like, I don't need Siri ruling my life. I don't need it. Now, me, I love it. I use it all the time, and I've switched up to the British accent, and the British accent can be a little snarky. Like, I was like, hey, I'm, I was out of town. I was like, hey, Siri, where's the nearest mall? And she's like, shopping again, huh? And she think you should lose a little bit more weight before you fill up your closet. I'm like, it's ridiculous. Some of them are like, that really happened? It didn't happen, but... But we have access, and if we don't want access, we can turn it off. Here's the reality. Here's the parallel. We have access to the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's always around. So if you were acting messy and ratchet and ridiculous in the club last night, he wasn't taking a smoke break outside. Like, he's like, come on, come on. We know that's your song, Cardi B, but let's go. Like... No, the Holy Spirit is always around, but you can, I said this two weeks ago during the unstoppable favor, you can't stop God's favor, but you can block it. You know you can muddy the waters of your ability to be sensitive to the things of God. The Holy Spirit is always speaking. I want you to know that. That Just because I have a mic and I'm a man of the cloth and I can marry and bury does not mean I have more access to the Holy Spirit than you do. The Holy Spirit is always Speaking, but we allow distractions and noise and toxic thinking and relationships that you know you shouldn't be in. We allow these things in our lives, and it takes the access that the Holy Spirit should have, and we're almost blocking the ability to hear Him. I want you to take down notes if you're writing these down. I want you to write this down. Number one, we have to want the help of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit won't help or fix something you refuse to surrender. And he won't bless what you refuse to release. I've said this multiple times. He will not force himself on your life, but he will move in every area of your life and be your comforter, be your advocate, be your intercessor, be your strengthener, everything you need when you need it if you'll make room. But you have to also be willing for him to tell you these things need changed in your life. We don't like that. Because when you pluck a weed or something gets pruned, it's pretty uncomfortable. Or he may have to say, listen, I need you to fix this or you'll notice that nudge. You need to fix this before it becomes more broken. Yeah. It's like when you first chip a tooth, yeah. and, and if you just went straight to the dentist, I mean, you're like, "That's I don't. That's now nah, you're speaking blasphemy. I don't even go to the dentist because it hurts." <laughs> but, but but you know, if you chip a tooth, you go to the dentist and, and they fix it. But if you let it go too long, what ends up happening? You might have to get a root canal and then a crown. You have to go through all of these extra steps. So the Holy Spirit's like, "Hey, you need to fix this before it becomes." more broken. You need to get out of this toxic situation. You need to surrender that toxic thinking. You need to let go of that toxic relationship. Whatever it is, you have to be willing, this is tough, for him to help you. But like with Siri, like I said, we have the ability to turn it on or turn it off. The Holy Spirit is always right there. Right when you need him. Right when you need healing. Right when you need peace. The Holy Spirit is always there, but the reality is, and I said this a moment ago, the distractions and choices we make can totally mess with. And listen, I need you to hear this uh, because I don't want this to sound hyper spiritual. It, it doesn't have to be an audible voice. Like it doesn't have to be like Sheila. You're like, oh Lord, like that was <laughs> super loud. <laughs> it could be that intuition. Has anybody ever experienced that? It could be that just that gut check, that knowing. Uh, uh, my mom, I remember uh, we were about to go to this like youth trip, and we were going to this amusement park. And my mom woke up in the middle of the night and, and uh, she, it was like a vision. She had had this dream and it woke her up and, and she saw the van that we were all in, all the students that we were in, uh, going off the road and rolling, like flipping and rolling down this hill. 
And she got up and began to pray. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, if that was you, God, I pray that you would confirm it. She gets a phone call an hour later from the pastor's wife and said, I don't think that the kids should take the trip. I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw the van in a dream, all the kids in it, I saw it go off in the ditch and roll over and everybody was killed. My mom said, I did too. The Holy Spirit was speaking. But what if they would have been like, get these kids out of the house. It's time for them to go. Here's a couple of hot pockets. They're not even microwave. Just take them and go. They'll fall out on the drive. <laughs> no, we have to be sensitive. I read this story about a park ranger at Yellowstone National Park who was uh, intent on telling the hikers all about the different flowers and animals. And he was so frustrated with all the messages and all the noise that was coming through his two-way radio. And it was so distracting, he turned it off. About 45 minutes into the hike, they got to the, the peak of where they were going, and there was, another, uh, uh, there was a, another park ranger sprinting at them, completely out of breath, and ran up and said, why, why haven't you been answering your radio? Why haven't you been listening to the radio? And he said, what's going on, man? Sorry, I was just showing everybody about the flowers and the animals. He said, man, we've been watching a bear stalking you guys for the past 45 minutes, and he got dangerously close to you. The guy had blocked the access and the ability to hear something that was ultimately dangerous. And here's the reality. Anytime we ignore those nudges, those intuition, those still small voice moments, or we allow life and the distractions of life to muddy the waters of our ability to hear the Holy Spirit, number one, we begin to rely on ourselves more than God. And number two, it could put you in a really dangerous, messed up situation. So do not block the access that God wants to give you through the help of the Holy Spirit. We have to want the help of the Holy Spirit. I love this song, Holy Spirit. We're going to sing it at the end. And the bridge says, uh, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. That first part, let us become more aware we need to be aware, we need to be more aware that the presence of God is with us. I read this story about this little boy who was flying a kite and the wind kept taking it higher and higher and higher to the point where he couldn't see the kite anymore. And he was holding onto that string and this guy walked by and said, hey, what are you holding on to? And he said, I'm a kite. And he said, how do you even know a kite's up there? The little boy said, because I can sense it, I can feel it. And the truth is, this isn't about feelings and goosebumps and emotions the reality is when you get closer to the presence of God, you'll begin to notice those nudges. And the closer you get to his presence and he shapes and molds you, you'll begin to feel the tangible anointing of the presence of God. He might even wake you up in the night and put a name of someone in your heart and say, pray for her. How many of y'all want to be so sensitive to the presence of God that you live life, you work, you take care of the, your family, but you function fully in the gift and the anointing and the purpose that you're called to? Somebody should shout. So we have to want the help of the Holy Spirit. Moving on, we call out Siri's name. It's instant access. I can say, Siri, what's this song? Siri, can you help me with this? And the reality is, number two, write this down. We have to call on the Holy Spirit. We have to invite him. That's why there's so many churches that just kind of go through the motions. That's why I'm grateful from the inception of Hope City. Pastor Jeremy said, this will be a church of signs, wonders, and miracles. This will be a church of the power of the Holy Spirit. This will be a church where people walk in broken and hurting and need hope and walk out. And we will be hope to a city that is far from God and will do whatever it takes to reach people for Jesus. The truth is, we don't just go through the motions. We're not just scratching a, a, a checkbox or crossing a T or dotting an I and going through a Sunday ritual. This is not about routine or tradition. This is about the presence of the living yeah. God. And so we have to call on the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Acts 4, verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place where they were meeting together was shaken. And it was a sign of God's presence they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness and courage. Close your eyes with me just for a moment. Say out loud, God, show up like that here at Hope City. Come on, show up like that here at Hope City. I was texting my friend Jabin Chavez yesterday, pastors in an incredible church in Las Vegas, and he put this up on his Instagram last night. He said, as you read through the books of Acts, you will notice that every time the Holy Spirit is poured out, people begin to praise speak in tongues, preach and prophesy because God knows your tongue. 
has power. Your tongue is directing the course of your life, so he gives us the Holy Spirit to give us the advantage. Proverbs 18, 21 says, the death and life's in the power of your tongue. Job 22, 28 says, decree a thing and it shall be established. The Holy Spirit will speak through you when you allow him to have that type of access and you call upon it. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 14, one of my favorite verses, I've been referencing this all throughout Summer at Hope City. It says, this is the confidence we have. See, when you know that it's not just a vibe, an emotion, or a feeling, but you know it's a, the person of the Holy Spirit is with you, fighting for you, right there alongside you. It says, this is the confidence we have when approaching God. Again, three in one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And one of the things that blows me completely away and always will until we get to heaven is that God, out of all the billions of people in the world, actually wants to hang out with you. Like, he loves you that much. Like, we say, like, what's up, bro? I love you, man. I don't like that guy very much. I don't want to hang out with that guy. But he loves you. And he wants you to pursue his presence. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16, 11, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face. That's his presence continually. Longing to be in his presence. Again, it doesn't have to be an audible voice. It doesn't have to be a prophetic moment. But the prophetic moment could be spoken through a sermon. It could come through the word. The truth is the Holy Spirit will speak directly to you every day. This is why we say spiritual discipline is key. Every day when you spend time in the presence of God, if you haven't heard the audible voice or even that nudge or the intuition lately, the Holy Spirit will speak directly through his word to you. And as you read through the Bible, I said this a couple weeks ago, a pastor friend of mine said, every day that spiritual discipline's like the jack in the box. I open the Bible and turn the page and it's really good reading and all of a sudden one day pop revelation. That's super cheesy, but you'll remember it. The revelation will pop off the page. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. And sometimes in devastation, you'll also get revelation. Yeah. Sometimes in the midst of a valley moment, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and comfort you. And you're like, I have no idea how I got through this. The Holy Spirit was with you. Yeah. For 43 days, I've told this story before. The doctors kept saying, this doesn't look good. This looks like multiple tumors. This doesn't look good. You're going to have to deal with this. You're going to have to walk through this. And I remember my wife looking at me and saying, if God got me through all that he got me through as a little kid and wrapped me up in his presence, I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit then. And I feel his presence now. So for 43 days, we were fighting, contending, leaning in and asking God to show us up. And I just needed one word from the Lord. I just needed the presence of God to flood my house and just say, it's going to be okay. But I wasn't getting it. And in this waiting season, I'm like, God, where are you? Yet I continued to seek him. Yet we continued to worship through it. Yet in the middle of all the devastating news, we kept getting more and more revelation of how good he was. Remember, I was doing the dishes like any good husband does. Right? All the ladies say, amen. I and the guys were like, you have a mic. You have a responsibility to not say that ever out loud. <laughs> so I was doing the dishes and I was alone. Jackie was upstairs washing her face and she was upstairs and I was standing in the kitchen. I said, God, I just need a word from you. I need to know that this is going to be okay. And I felt, I can't describe it. I felt a peace come over me in that kitchen like I had never experienced before. And I heard the Lord say, Daniel, Tomorrow, you will see the work of my hand. And I took that one word. And I fell to my knees in that kitchen. I said, that's what I've been needing. But I realized in that moment that the entire time, the entire quiet waiting season, the entire time, the Holy Spirit was right there giving us peace, giving her courage, giving her fire and boldness, giving her perseverance, giving her fight, giving us hope. Because if there's any area of your life that feels hopeless, it's under the influence of a lie. Let the Holy Spirit heal that in you. Let him fix that in you. Let him deliver that from you. The next day we show up to the doctor and they treated her like patient number 77432. It was all protocol and business and sign in sheets. And we got in the back room and the doctor looked at us and said, I don't know what happened up until this day, but after we ran all the tests just now, there's no tumors. Come on, your blood is clear. And you don't have it. Come on, somebody. Somebody should shout. But I recognized in the middle of all of it 
that God was continuing, even in the quiet moments, the Holy Spirit was still speaking to us through his word. When we needed peace, Philippians 4, 7 was the peace we needed, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard both your hearts and your minds. When you need courage in the area of healing or wisdom, you can go to the Lord in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, I trust you, Lord, with all of my heart, and I'm going to lean not on my own understanding. I'm not going to lean on WebMD. I'm not going to lean on any of that. I'm going to trust you, because in all my ways, I'll submit to you. You said you'd make my path straight. The Holy Spirit will speak to you through his word, because here's the truth. He has the goods to back it up. Whenever I ask Siri for help, or I ask Siri for directions, or I ask Siri to set my alarm, or I ask Siri to help me with a local restaurant, and she gives me that information, I look at it, I see it, and I trust it because she has the goods to back it up. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. When you lean into his presence, and you recognize that God's way is not only good, but it's actually better, and you approach his presence, and you ask him, Lord, I need you to help me in this area, we have to trust that the routes, the detours, and the directions he takes us, we trust him in the middle of it. Why? Because he has the goods to back it up. So number three, if you're taking down notes, you can write this down. We have to trust the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we have to want the help of the Holy Spirit. We have to call on his name, and we have to trust the leading of the Holy Spirit. Would you stand to your feet as we bring this in for a, a landing today? I pray that something was unlocked and I pray that you would recognize the access that you have to the person of the Holy Spirit, that he wants to comfort you and be your advocate and your strengthener. The peace that you need is found in the presence of the living God. Will you lift your hands towards heaven? Father, today I pray that a fresh wind of your spirit would meet every single person, every individual, every married couple, every future married couple, that you would meet every person here that's wrestling with and struggling with a diagnosis issue, that's struggling with a financial crisis. God, I pray right now that you would meet every single person in this place at Katy, at Woodlands, online, God, that just needs peace. Flood and overtake us, God. Speak to us today through your word. Let the peace that surpasses all understanding <clears throat> begin to guard both our hearts and our minds. God, I pray today, Lord, that there would be a sensitivity that's unlocked. Would you do me a favor? I, I do this all the time, but I just, I think the posture of surrender is just different when we go open-handed like this. Would you just open your hands towards heaven? You can do it at home. You can do it at other locations. And just say, God, remove from me any distraction that's keeping me from hearing your voice. Jesus, remove from me any distraction that's keeping me from hearing the still small voice of your spirit. I need you, I want you, and I invite you into my life, into my family. So remove anything, every weed, every toxic thought, every toxic relationship, all toxic mindsets, all toxic speaking, just remove it all if it's distracting me from you. I never want to block your agenda or your presence in my life. Now, right now, will you just begin to allow God to just refresh you and renew you and restore you? And I believe download this hope, just filling hearts right now. Some of you, you've been wrestling with panic attacks. They end today. Some of you have been having restless nights. You can't sleep without some sort of uh, sleep aid. You'll sleep better tonight with supernatural peace than you've ever slept before. There is hope filling marriages that feel like they're falling apart. There's somebody today, look at me, I don't know who this is for. Maybe it's online. You're going back for more tests this week and you're gonna be baffled at what the doctor's reports are. They're gonna say, we don't know what happened, but you no longer are dealing with this. Come on, can we hook our faith up with audacious faith right now? Look at me really quickly, and then you can put your hands down. We're gonna worship for just a moment. I was in uh, Canton, Ohio, and afterwards, one of the safety team guys said, hey, can you pray for my wife? She has to go back in for some tests. They found a, a, a pretty sizable mass that they're really concerned about. And we begin to pray in the back, and I said, may the peace of the Holy Spirit begin to flood your heart. 
and begin to renew your mind. And I just kept hearing the Lord say, tell her it's not what it looks like. And again, I'm not a psychic. I'm not afraid to miss it. I'm more concerned about not being obedient. And so I said, listen, I, I'm not a psychic, but I feel like there's a prophetic moment that's happening. And, and I just heard the Lord say, it's not what it looks like. And she began to weep and she looked at her husband. She said, what did I tell you? He said, you said after they told you that they saw a sizable mass, you said, you said the Lord told you it's okay. It's not what it looks like. And she said, that's confirmation. And she went back and I got the text message on the Tuesday after the Sunday I went. The doctors looked at it and the moment he looked at it, he said, ha, huh, it's not what it looks like. It's not cancer at all. There's no, come on somebody. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding that guards both your heart and your mind. So come on with our hands lifted. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory. Come on, I need to hear some daughters and sons sing and say, Let us be of your Let us experience. Come on, sing it till you believe it. Come on, call on his name. Say, Let us become. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our marriages, our families, our lives. We trust you. Yeah. If you're here today and you're at our Woodlands location, you're Katie, you're watching online, you're in this room, you say, Daniel, here's the truth. I don't know Jesus as my Savior. So we're talking about the Trinity. We're talking about Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We're talking about the access that we have. And the truth is, I don't know him. Something in my heart convincing me of the fact all service long that there's more to life than the way I've been living it. I don't know Jesus, but I want to. Or maybe you're here with every eye closed just for a moment. Maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, I got caught up in the prodigal life. And the truth is I haven't been living for him. I used to walk with him, but I, I don't know him now. But I want to rededicate my life today and I want to make things right today with Jesus. Here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We pray, again, according to Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. And when you Speak and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Everything changes, slate wiped clean. Sins has thrown as far from the east as the west. And we will not embarrass you. It's God's job to change, but it is our job to walk with you and disciple you. And you do have a next step. And our service host at the end of the service will give you that next step. But first we need to pray. And if you're watching online, you can type in yes to Jesus 
I wanna give my life to Jesus today. You can say that right now. But well, everybody right now with your eyes closed, I'm gonna count to three, and if that's you, say, Daniel, at the count of three, just lift up your hand. One, I wanna give my life to Jesus. Two, I wanna rededicate. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I'm looking everywhere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, over here, 21, over there. Come on, guys, we can give God praise more than that. That's incredible. All right, I want everybody, including our Incredible Hope City worship team, all of our team and everybody in the room watching online at our other locations, pray this out so to the person that lifted their hands, they don't feel uncomfortable. Say this out loud with boldness. Jesus, it's me and I've been living for me and it hasn't worked. From today on, I choose to live for you. Forgive me for all my struggles and my sins. From this moment on, I will walk with you and I'm grateful for the access to your presence that you've given me. From this moment on, I'll live for you. For you are my Father, my Savior, and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, give God praise. Let's go.